Hi, I'm Theo and today I want to show you how to make animatronic eyelids with these 3D printed parts here. Well, first thing you have to know is we actually have a direction how we get together. So um, this part here, the eyelid, uh, that part is the front and these two connectors here, we go in the back. That means I have to assemble it like this, snaps together, and this tiny part here in the front, that has to point to the front, not to the back. So um, I made this part thinner to get more space for the puppeteer's hand underneath. Um, if you use it backwards, there will not be enough space for the puppeteer's hand, so um, keep that in mind when you assemble them. Uh, second part is, uh, when they are 3D printed, uh, this connection here, it's probably not gonna fit perfectly, so um, you have to use a tiny file or a uh, little bit of sandpaper uh, to uh, get that perfectly round and uh, also uh, you can use a drill or something like that uh, to make that part here smooth. Um, if you want them just posable, uh, you can stop uh, when they just fit together, but if you want to make them animatronic with a Bowden cable or uh, with servo motors, uh, you have to make sure what we move as frictionless and uh, smooth as possible. And that means they will move by their own. So just gravity will get them into another position. Um, and this results into you not having to put much force on it to actually move the eyelid. So try to make them as smooth as possible. Next thing is the actual eye. Well, I usually use ping pong balls like this one here and uh, if you look closely on the ping pong ball you will see a line that's where the two halves join together. Um, when you insert it make sure that the line is aligned like this from this side to this side because that's actually hidden by the eyelid. Um, if you just want to make um, a static eye here without uh, backlight, um, it doesn't matter that much where that line is, but it is a little bit visible, so I always try to hide it, and it's it works best if it's out of sight. And if you use a backlight, you will see that uh, really a lot if you have it too far in the front. So, um, as soon as you have aligned it right, you can just um, use a pen and go around it. A little bit hard here on the camera. Make sure that you have uh, uh, line that you can see easily and the next thing actually is using a knife I usually use uh, a scalpel or something like that um, to cut the part off so um This part now fits perfectly inside and you can make sure that uh, 
the line here is still in the right position. That's the position uh, when I glue it in. I usually do that from below. I use a little bit of plast and smear it around here so it's um, about two or three millimeters on the inside and then push it outwards so it's um, well connecting with the whole ring here. Uh, you can also re uh, use plus to reinforce these parts here a little bit um, because if you have to replace the eyelets several times they can snap, they are not very strong. Well, as soon as the eye is glued in, you can then assemble the eyelet and, well, it's not as easily movable as it's not glued in here, but um, uh, you can see what I'm trying to do. Um, if uh, the eyelid wasn't um, well perfectly printed, the overhangs here are sometimes a little bit tricky. I recommend using uh, some uh, grinding tool uh, to remove excess material and get the inside really really smooth. You don't want anything rubbing on on the eye so uh, when you assemble it there should ideally be about half a millimeter space between the eye and the eyelid and uh, it should never rub on any parts of the eye. Uh, here on the back side you'll see uh, these holes. They are meant uh, to be used for animatronics. So you can, for example, uh, use um, a Bowden cable or uh, a piece of metal wire um, or even here this safety pin. Um, oops, <laughs> to hook it on. And then move the eyelid by pushing or pulling. Um, I used the safety pin to uh, show you something very important. If this has play and is not tight, you will not be able to move the eyelid precisely. You have to have a connection that is stays in place but is also a little bit flexible. If you just use a piece of metal here and well directly push, pushing motion is not linear. It has to bend a little bit. So um, it works much better if you have either a connection here that can move a little bit upwards and downwards or uh, if you use something that can bend in itself like uh, the steel cable inside of a bicycle brake cable, a Bowden cable. That's it for now. I hope you learned something. So bye bye.